Welcome. I'm Tammy Irwin, CEO of Verizon Business. On December 3rd of last year, we told the world that together, Verizon and AWS had joined forces to bring the power of the world's leading cloud closer to mobile and connected devices at the edge of Verizon's 5G ultra wideband network. Built on millimeter wave spectrum, our 5G is designed from the ground up to support transformative experiences that will improve how we all live, work, and play. Here's why that matters. Verizon's 5G network enables peak throughputs that are at least 10 times faster than 4G, up to 10 gigabits per second. It provides robust bandwidth, handling data volumes that are 100 times larger, and delivers ultra low latencies, which is the time it takes for a signal to get from point A to point B. Not to mention the ability to connect over a million devices per square kilometer. And that's why we're excited to share that today we're bringing AWS Wavelength to the edge of our network, unlocking the power of 5G Edge and Mobile Edge Compute for you, developers around the world, to build and innovate entirely new categories of applications. Consider this your new sandbox to explore what's next. To share more about our partnership and the work we've done since December, I'd like to introduce Matt Garman, Vice President, AWS Worldwide Sales and Marketing. Matt. Glad to be here, Tammy, to talk about a topic that our teams and customers have been very engaged in, the potential of 5G for a new generation of applications built to take advantage of ultra low latency, high bandwidth, and the ubiquitous network connectivity of 5G. Customers are intrigued by the promise of 5G, but they're looking for guidance on how this technology will impact their applications. And really, here's the problem that people face. To take advantage of 5G capabilities, your application and devices often need a meaningful amount of compute and storage, and sometimes even databases, analytics capabilities, and machine learning. Now, in order to execute on these applications, customers today usually connect to the cloud and AWS. But if you're accessing your application from a mobile device, that device has to cross multiple network hops to get from the mobile network to the internet. It has to go from the device to the cell tower, then through metro aggregation sites, regional aggregation sites, and finally to the internet and to AWS. Now, a lot of the most exciting potential 5G applications, like machine learning inference at the edge, or automotive industry equipment, smart cars and smart cities, IoT and augmented virtual reality, often can't afford the latency that's associated with that round trip from the mobile edge all the way to the cloud. Now our customers want fewer hops, and really what they want is for their latency sensitive portions of their application to be located as close to the 5G towers or edge as possible. And they want to build and manage their edge applications in the exact same way with the same tools, same control plane and APIs that they use for the rest of their application that works in AWS. Now this is a hard problem and one that we started collaborating on with our partners at Verizon about two years ago. We came up with a solution that we announced at our AWS reInvent conference last December where we announced AWS Wavelength. Wavelength is a new AWS service that lets you build applications that delivers millisecond latency to mobile devices and users using AWS compute, storage, all at the edge of the 5G network. Today, I'm excited to announce AWS Wavelength is now generally available in Boston and the San Francisco Bay Area. AWS Wavelength extends AWS infrastructure to 5G networks by embedding AWS infrastructure deployments in the telco provider's data centers so that traffic can reach application servers running in these wavelength zones without ever leaving the 5G mobile network. This eliminates the latency that would result from multiple hops to the internet and helps developers start to really unlock the potential of 5G for their applications. Starting today, customers can deploy the latency sensitive portions of their applications in a wavelength zone at the edge of the Verizon 5G network in both Boston and the Bay Area in California and then seamlessly connect the portions of their application that are running at the edge to the rest of their application and the full breadth of services that they have running in AWS. Developers can use the same familiar AWS services, APIs, tools, and functionality that they use today. Verizon is by far the leader in 5G in the US, and we're very excited to bring Wavelength to these first two Verizon locations, 
with more on the way. Thanks, Matt. It's an exciting time indeed. There's never been a more critical time for mobility, broadband, and cloud, and for creating the 21st century infrastructure that will shape our future. Think about how the past few months have dramatically changed our lives and how quickly we've accelerated the shift to digital. For example, how we practice healthcare. We're never going to sit in a doctor's office sick again. Or education, where remote learning will soon be the norm and not the exception. Or how we consume content, entertainment, sports and gaming, being fully immersed in experiences rather than simply just spectating. As the first company in the world to commercially launch 5G, we stand with you at the edge of a new era. Welcome to 5G Mobile Edge Compute. Beginning today, Verizon is the first company in the world to offer 5G Mobile Edge Compute live with AWS Wavelength in network locations in the Meds to Eds community of Boston and in the epicenter of tech innovation, the Bay Area. And we're not done. We've committed to launching eight more cities by the end of 2020. Now, of course, the most important part of today's announcement is the potential we're unlocking with this platform. Several of our incredible partners have been testing the new service to build applications that will transform industries ranging from healthcare to sports. So instead of telling you about it, let me show you. Let's take a look at what they've been up to. Hi, my name is Davian Ross, and I'm one of the founders and president of DD Sports, and our basketball product is called Shot Tracker. Shot Tracker is a sensor-based technology that tracks statistics and analytics, providing real-time data to coaches, broadcast partners, fans, and players, all with sub-second latency. Basketball is constant activity up and down. Latency is so, so, so critical. One thing that we're doing that's really exciting is demoing our shot tracker technology over Verizon 5G and AWS Wavelength. This allows us to see the delta between the traditional process, which is 4G, and this accelerated amplified process that utilizes both 5G and Mac. You can distinctly see the difference in the speed of ball movement. When I think about what 5G and edge computing can do, I think about coaches. I think about them getting access to this video and data anywhere in the facility. It may be in the locker room at halftime or sitting on the bench during the game, all delivered in real time. When you think about being able to take this data and incorporate it into the broadcast, latency is even more important. We're really excited about what 5G and MEC will provide to the market. We've been waiting on this for so long, and the time is now. It's finally here. And it will revolutionize the fan experience, the viewing experience, and how we consume data and sports for the rest of our lives. Hi, I'm Raj Nair. I am the co-founder, chief scientist, and acting CEO of Avesha Systems. We build a platform for accelerating edge applications. The trial we're doing with Verizon and AWS is about using AI to help endoscopists more accurately detect polyps in real time. I'm Dr. Shannon Scholl. I'm a gastroenterologist in Raleigh, North Carolina, and a physician owner in Raleigh Endoscopy Center. One of the problems that gastroenterologists like myself face is finding these very subtle polyps. The purpose of this trial is to use 5G, AI, and the edge to put another set of eyes on that. Colonoscopy moves very, very fast, and I really need a computer program to keep up with me. I can't wait two to three seconds. So the really vital thing about this technology is the speed. It works by taking the video feed from the scope, sending it through the 5G network to the wavelength node, where the AI model is trained for identifying different types of polyps. And the results are then sent back in real time to the monitor of the practitioner. So what you're seeing here is the actual high def 
monitor that I'm looking at during a colonoscopy procedure. And the neat thing about this program is that it's drawing bounding boxes around this polyp in real time. And they really draw my attention to this sort of pale, flat polyp that's trying to blend into the background. Might not have otherwise seen this. The system, if it is not fast enough, will actually miss drawing boxes around the polyps in real time. And that's why you need Verizon's 5G and AWS wavelength to give you that low latency. The thing that really excites me about this technology is that I think it's going to be really important in the prevention of colon cancer. It improves accuracy in patient outcomes. It's going to be the standard of care, and it's going to be accessible to everyone. And that's good medicine. Hi, I'm Shanky Vishwanathan, CTO for Communication, Media and Information Services at Tata Consultancy Services, TCS. We are developing a lot of innovative solutions around Smart Factory, which necessitates high bandwidth, high reliability, and low latency requirements for a connected digital ecosystem within the shop flow. Let me take a particular use case within the industrial manufacturing setup, which is called end-of-line quality control. Traditional approaches have been either manual quality controls or very localized edge systems doing visual analytics. In this pilot, with Verizon and AWS, high-resolution cameras take video and stock images of the objects passing through the production line. These are shipped through Verizon 5G to the mech, where an Amazon Wavelength Edge Compute Zone correlates these images with stock images of what it has to be. Any deviation in quality immediately gets triggered as an aberration, and remedial action is initiated back to the production line controller or to a supervisor as appropriate. This entire connected ecosystem of high resolution cameras, the visual analytics ecosystems which operate out of these images, and the low latency response that is needed for remedial action, all of this has to happen near real time, which is exactly where Verizon's 5G, AWS's wavelength, and our solutions come into play. The trial results out of this use case really illustrates how we can harmoniously bring multiple technologies to bear with 5G and edge compute together. Those are just a few of the exciting stories that we're hearing from our customers as they combine AWS services with the advantage of 5G. We're seeing customers use Wavelength to support emerging interactive applications like game streaming, augmented reality, or virtual reality, IoT, and machine learning inference at the edge. Now this is just the beginning, and we can't wait to see what exciting new ideas our customers come up with to leverage this new technology. And coming soon, we're excited to extend these benefits to even more people as we launch additional locations around the US with Verizon and with other partners and geographies around the world. Matt, you are absolutely right. We're sitting on the cusp of the next industrial revolution and have a once in a lifetime opportunity to completely reimagine the future. Take a moment and let that sink in. I'd like to thank Matt and the team at AWS. I'd also like to thank the incredible people at Verizon who have worked so hard to bring 5G edge to market and to provide the tools to make this possible. We hope that you are all as excited as we are about the possibilities of what you can do with Mobile Edge Compute, powered by Verizon and AWS. There's no doubt you'll have unprecedented opportunities to build truly transformative solutions. And there's never been a more important time in our world to innovate and to build a future that's inclusive and accessible to all. And now I'm excited to encourage you to stay on for a special deep dive session where team members from Verizon and AWS will cover the technical details of AWS Wavelength and Verizon 5G Edge and answer your questions directly. Enjoy learning more about how we can change the world together. Be well. It doesn't happen often, maybe only once in a lifetime. 
the exact right technology appears in the exact right place at the exact right time. Technology that makes possible what felt impossible only moments ago. Massive computing power now comes right to the edge. Where it works best, where it's needed most. We're at the beginning, where ambition has never been higher, the challenges never greater, the opportunities more amazing. This is 5G Edge, the world's first mobile edge computing platform with AWS Wavelength. It's here, it's ready, and now it's up to you. Hello and welcome everybody. It is quite an exciting day over here on the AWS Twitch channel. On today's stream, we'll be talking a bit more about the launch of AWS Wavelength. My name is Nick Walsh, Developer Advocate at Amazon Web Services, and I'll be your host for today's session. To discuss a bit more about this launch and broadly the partnership between Verizon and AWS, we've assembled an incredible panel of folks, all bringing some unique insights into what makes Wavelength so impactful. In the video, we heard a bit from senior leadership on both sides of the table, as well as customers, and we'll be extending that here with a deeper dive, followed by some live Q&A at the end. So get those questions in, in Twitch chat. We'll do a round of introductions in just a bit, but to kick things off, I'm going to pass the baton to George Elisayos, General Manager of AWS Wavelength, and Srini Kalapala, VP of Technology at Verizon. Gentlemen, let's set the stage a little bit for the folks that are just joining us. What is AWS Wavelength and the Verizon 5G Edge? Thanks, Nick, and uh, everyone watching. Uh, we're all very visibly excited to be here in the position to announce the general availability of uh, AWS Wavelength today, both the AWS team, but also our Verizon friends. Uh, to your question, put simply, AWS Wavelength brings AWS services to the edge of the 5G network. Um, in this way, it enables developers to build applications that reach end users and devices with um, ultra low latencies. Wavelength is really made up of um, Wavelength zones. These are infrastructure deployments that embed AWS compute, storage, and other higher level services into the 5G edge, uh, physically close to the end devices. And today we're announcing the general availability of two of these zones in the Verizon 5G edge. One to give low latency to the Boston area and one to give low latency to the Bay area. AWS developers will use these wavelength zones to deploy the latency sensitive parts of their applications while also seamlessly accessing the full breadth of the AWS um, services back in the AWS region. Uh, but the cloud is just one of the ingredients here. The other key is the technology of 5G. And maybe for that, I think I'm going to go uh, over and pass to Srini, who can say a lot more. Uh, thanks, Nick and uh, George. Uh, it's, uh, it's indeed a very exciting day to announce the general availability of uh, the Verizon 5G Edge with uh, Wavelength. Uh, um, hello to everyone who's watching the stream. Uh, you know, I want to give a little bit of background related to 5G. From the day we start talking about 5G, we've been saying that the 5G that Verizon is building is not like any other 5G or that's incremental to 4G. We've been building a transformational 5G network. So in that aspect, we talked about millimeter spectrum, we talked about slices, we talked about uh, the eight different currencies, and we also talked about multi-axis edge computing. And our goal always has been to bring the best out of these technologies and allow for a, a, a you know a transformational network to emerge out of this, right? So let, let's talk about what we've been doing in, in kind of bringing these out. Uh, in February, we announced that we were able to deliver 4.2 gigabits worth of uh, you know, bandwidth to a smartphone. Um, that's very exciting if you look at 4.2 gigabits. Now, we're stopping there. We actually have more coming down and, and uh, you know, we keep pushing the technology. Same way, uh, recently we announced that uh, we've successfully tested and trialed a, uh, a SA packet core. It's called standalone packet core. Now, that's what is going to enable slicing. And we've talked about slicing and that's again in the works and it's going to come out. We also talked about that, um, that, that our goal is to bring in the best of the network and the best of the technologies together to deliver this, this uh, you know, uh, uh, transformational experience. And in that aspect, we started working with AWS about two years ago. Um, we started working together on the, on the 5G edge. We, in fact, did a trial uh, two years ago uh, on the 5G network. Then uh, last year at reInvent, we announced uh, uh, the, the preview of the the Wavelength 5G Edge. And now we're here uh, 
bringing the 5G edge general availability to all of you so that uh, the enterprises and the global uh, developers can uh, start leveraging these, uh, these technologies and develop uh, uh, the future. Yeah, so I mean, you know, the, the bandwidth uh, possibilities with 5G are clearly, clearly as, as you mentioned, um, you know, you, you touched a little bit on the partnership and sort of how this has come to be this this long uh, multi-year process of experimentation and ultimately rolling this out. Um, you know, George, on the AWS side, what did it look like to bring a partnership with with Verizon for something like Wavelength to, to market? What did this what did this take? Yeah, as Sri said, our collaboration has been on the works for quite some time. And, uh, you know, we pre-announced the Wavelength Zone at the Verizon 5G Edge in Chicago uh, with Andy and Hans on stage. Uh, and that was a really exciting announcement, but um, it was also a, a pretty big shift um, from the traditional approaches of mobile edge computing. And, and this is where the two teams really came together. Traditional approaches really focus primarily on network, do not necessarily do enough to bring the developer ecosystem into play. With Wavelength in the Verizon 5G, we're breaking ground by bringing both of these equally important parts, the cloud and the 5G network. Um, we're starting with two zones today, uh, one on each coast, but it's just the beginning. We've been working with Verizon uh, and we have grant plans on a series of additional zones coming up over the next few months all across the U.S. Our, our, our shared goal is to make Wavelength ubiquitous and truly bring the offering close to as many 5G devices as possible. And we also want to bring additional network and compute functionality and features to our customers. So overall, really excited with where we're going and to see what customers will really do with these uh, new capabilities. Uh, and I have to say, we're all, all at AWS really stoked to be working with Srini and his team. Uh, just eight months ago, we were at reInvent pre-announcing uh, together, and now we're here talking about the launch. Uh, it's just the beginning, and we're really looking forward to continue this inspiring collaboration. Yeah, well, well said, George. And I would say it's been an incredible partnership. I think uh, both the teams are uh, you know, working together. We're innovating, and we're accelerating some of these technologies. Uh, when, when you look at it from our customer perspective, uh, we're not only bringing uh, the best of the network to them, but also bringing the cloud, the best of the cloud, uh, closer to, to our customers. Now, as you see how the tech is evolving, it's not simply going to be the network, it's also going to be the, the cloud and the application and others. And, uh, and whoever can actually bring them together, make it very seamless for developers to access, are the ones you know, who are going to you know, drive the acceleration of these, uh, these technologies. So um, since reInvent, uh, you know, we've been working together to harden the technologies. Uh, on the process to scale it, you know, nationwide, and, and Josh talked about uh, uh, the potential, the the you know announcements that will be coming down the road. Um, and then uh, we actually onboard a few partners onto onto this platform uh, to ensure that the vision that that you know we're driving towards is what the experience they're actually getting. So when we look at the partners, I know the you know the the video that uh, you saw uh, kind of showcased a couple of them. Uh, Partners didn't have to do anything different than what they've been doing on the AWS to access the the wavelength, the platform, and the 5G network. And and as they you know onboarded, they actually are really seeing the the benefits of the bandwidth and the latency and others. So um, uh, certainly, you know, all of those learnings have kind of helped us uh, to not only you know, get to the launch today, but uh, scale scale as we um, as we go forward. Look, the way, the way we see this is um, it's now. You, the users, the developers, uh, who have to show us where we're going to take this to. We'll bring all the capabilities and the, and the foundation text that you need, but uh, you are the one who are going to build the future, and uh, we're here to kind of uh, assist you on that. Wonderful. George, Srini, thank you so much for that introduction. Did a really good job phrasing sort of the, the high-level overview of what a partnership like this uh, looks like and how it came to be. Now, uh, I think one of the key themes of today's broadcast is going be partnership. And so uh, in the launch of AWS Wavelength, there are many other folks that were involved in making this possible, many of which are in the room with us today. Um, so before we go into uh, some questions that I have for each of them, I'm going to ask us to go around the horn here uh, and have everyone else introduce themselves. Hello. Thank you, Nick. Chris Barclay, Product Manager for Wavelength. Hello, everyone. I'm Saran and Shenmugam here. I'm a Wavelength Solutions Architect. Hi, uh, Terry Sender, and I'm the uh, the lead for uh, Edge Compute and Managed Solution Products at Verizon. 
Yes, hello. I'm Kirk Campbell. I uh, work for Verizon and I lead the MEC architecture team. Wonderful. Well, everyone, thank you for joining me on the call today. Uh, I've got some some burning questions for each of you. We'll dive a little bit deeper on each of your roles and some of the specifics uh, around each of your expertise when it comes to Wavelength. Uh, but kicking things off with Chris. Uh, Chris, we've spoken a little bit about Wavelength, but something that I'm wondering personally, why did we build it? You know, I can imagine ways this is valuable, but uh, here at AWS, we talk a lot about customer feedback. Can you talk a little bit more about the motivation behind this product? Sure, um, absolutely. So as George and Trini said, we, we saw an opportunity to basically combine the benefits that the developers have come to love about the AWS cloud, including a broad set of services and pay-as-you-go pricing and elasticity with the ultra-low latencies and high bandwidth that Verizon's bringing to market with 5G networks, and, and thereby enable developers to create truly novel experiences. Uh, and heard just a couple um, in the uh, previous video, uh, everything from uh, applications for game streaming and industrial automation, uh, autonomous vehicles. Th these, these sorts of use cases require you know, not only more compute and data processing, but, but they, they want uh, that, that compute and data processing closer uh, to the device. And so Wavelength allows us to address those challenges um, to, by bringing those AWS services right to the edge of the 5G network, minimizing the latency to connect an application uh, from the mobile device. Wonderful, yeah. Uh, excited about those specific use cases that you brought up as well. Um, but you know, as someone who's followed reInvent and some of the recent launches that are networking related um, from AWS, like our recent reInvent, uh, there seem to be a number of new services in sort of this this broad category. So I'm wondering, how does Wavelength fit into the broad spectrum here of these newer offerings, like outposts or local zones? Sure. Uh, Wavelength, outposts, and local zones all bring AWS services to more places the same services and tools developers are used to. But Wavelength is unique in that it's designed to enable developers to build ultra low latency applications for mobile devices by extending AWS infrastructure, services and APIs and tools into those 5G networks. Um, and so developers can take you know, existing applications, as Trini said, extend them right into Wavelength zones or build even new, net new applications uh, with AWS services like EC2 and EKS. Yeah, Chris, last question for you for uh, just a moment. Um, I'm sort of wondering, you know, the desire to bring ed compute close to the edge where customers are is a total no-brainer for me. But I'm wondering, previous to Wavelength, how are enterprise customers currently addressing low latency requirements and what are the challenges that they face in trying? Sure, yes. Yeah, so, so some of our enterprise customers today use on-premises hardware to address their low latency requirements. But that requires capital expenditures, and operational expenditures and isn't really very elastic. Therefore, we see organizations steadily shifting their workloads to the cloud. But the cloud, it really isn't close enough for certain use cases um, like IoT devices or robots with video cameras that are generating vast quantities of data that need to be analyzed in real time. And so now with the Wavelength, they have a choice to use 5G um, and AWS Compute to get all those benefits. Wonderful. Yeah, looping uh, Kirk in over there, I'm wondering why do you think that integrating cloud into 5G networks is a game changer? I know we've heard a little bit from the AWS side, but figured I'd, I'd give you a place to chime in here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, simply put, bringing the two technologies together is gonna benefit customers and drive innovation. Uh, Verizon customers will get the benefit from access to the AWS's broad array of uh, compute storage, analytics, machine learn learning services. Uh, and then AWS customers will be able to benefit from uh, Verizon's advanced uh, network technologies, our density, massive capacity, and strategic placement of our network. Uh, and then bringing these two things together uh, provides a basis uh, for us to, uh, or for customers uh, to uh, innovate and, and you know, create new use cases around machine learning, uh, fully immersive virtual reality, augmented reality. Really, it's just, uh, it's just the beginning. We're just interested to see what everyone's going to make. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it really comes together for me, you know, again, low latency by being at the edge, higher bandwidth, these common APIs that developers like from the cloud at AWS, pay-as-you-go pricing. Um, Chris, coming back to some of the things that you spoke about before, you talked to some of those use cases for how folks are going to make the most out of wavelength. Um, what are those areas, if we could dive a little bit deeper, and what are you thinking that are use cases that people will be most interested in here? Sure. So we, we mentioned, or uh, we had three customers in the, the launch video. 
Uh, a couple others that I think are, are pretty interesting that are mentioned in, in uh, our launch announcement is, um, uh, one, the emergence of vehicle to everything communication technology increases uh, vehicle safety by sharing information between motor vehicles and transportation infrastructure. And every millisecond counts for unexpected driving situations where there might be blind spots or potential collisions. You want to uh, avoid those. And so by using Wavelink to, to host um, parts of the, the connected vehicle infrastructure, you can lower latency for that information and support the vehicle density in those major metropolitan areas. So that's one kind of th that we're pretty excited about. Um, another one is um, uh, being able to do video encoding distribution for, for live events. Uh, you can see that uh, like today, you know, certainly uh, video encoding distribution is, is you know, something that people have done for a long time. But one of the things we hear from customers is that um, they want to have a ultra high definition video streams that need both low latency and high bandwidth to keep up with the live event. And they want to embed interactive experiences into those streams to enhance the experience for the end users. And so I think we're seeing uh, the, the potential for new generations of, of uh, live events that might come online with the emergence of Wavelength and 5G. I think Terry, uh, you may have a couple others to, to mention. Yeah, no, Chris, those are great examples, right? And when we take that in the context also of, I mean, other items that were brought up on the call so far, but also what Tammy and Matt mentioned earlier, you kind of see very much as we've been talking about that transformative nature associated with what happens when you put wavelength at the edge of the Verizon network. And then when, when you think about that in the context of mission critical applications, particularly in the manufacturing space, I think we can highlight a few here that really kind of bring that home. So first off, when we think about like uh, computer vision, we talked about computer vision as applied to quality assurance for precision parts being applied, and that was covered earlier in the video. Um, but that same capability, and we have customers working with us today on taking that same concept, applying it to packaging inside of, of a logistics environment, or then transferring that into a food processing and food production uh, facility, also for quality assurance. Um, and then you can take a similar capabilities in a different aspect of the factory and take a look at, at how ADV controls, autonomous guided vehicles, can be complemented with you know, sensorization and camera capabilities to now all of a sudden enhance employee safety inside of those in environments. Um, and then I think I would take probably one more, uh, which is uh, which kind of, even though it applies very well to the manufacturing space, I think it crosses many different industries. And this is the whole concept around inventory management in real time. And we take that concept, tying together and very similar concepts of, of sensorization, analytics at the edge, computer vision, and you start to apply that to looking at, at uh, uh, material uh, and components and production uh, 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 product uh, inventory, all of a sudden you can really impact some, a business from you know, completely from production all the way through to consumption. Yeah, and uh, to add something to this and maybe uh, just echo what others said here, what we all fa have found very exciting over the past few months when talking to customers about the potential applications in their business is those light bulbs that come up as you're talking to customers and you bring the, the, the value proposition of what we're getting uh, at with Web. And you can see how they start thinking about how their business can be transformed with these new capabilities. So just to echo that we are all really excited to see what customers will do with this. We see that as we talk, as we talk to more and more customers, more and more ideas come up. Uh, we really believe that 90% of the applications that will run on this have, have not been written yet. Awesome, yeah, I mean, when we hear about these use cases, uh, you know, I, I work with a lot of customers on the AWS side here, uh, sort of all the gears start clicking for me and as to who would be most excited about this. Um, but I'm curious, on the Verizon business side, Harry, maybe you could take this one. Um, why do the, uh, why should Verizon business customers be very excited about this launch? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, for all the, many of the points we just highlighted, for instance, the, the transformative nature of what we're doing with regard to wavelength and 5G at the edge of the network really starts to ch uh, address specifically the challenges that, that businesses have today. I mean, if we take a look at at you know the current environment, the change in the demands on transformation are really uh, driving a great deal of this discussion with us. A lot of the use cases we've talked about are only intensified based on on that uh, uh, those activities. So let, let's take for instance the fact that um, once we deploy wavelength along with with uh, the 5G network in an environment, 
we are essentially giving a business the ability to run their operations and get and serve their customers with with uh, uh, across that entire market in real time. Um, but you know, of course, one of these aspects is that we've made it very easy. You know, you know, along with with uh, uh, with our AWS partners to to really onboard devices and applications into this into this space. I mean, it's it's, it's very simple, very very uh, intuitive. Um, we know that there are customers on the journey, right? They're they're adapting, they're evolving. So we bring our SI and and partner uh, ecosystem also to the table collectively to help them not just evolve and, and and adapt, but also create disruptive solutions to really go after their market. So truly a transformative you know set of technology. Yeah, if I can add uh, yeah. one more factor. Uh, uh, sorry, Nick, I was going to jump in and add a thought here. Um, look, we you've heard us use the word fourth industrial revolution. Um, look at it. If you've seen what happened in the past few years and few decades, the digitization has come to consumer applications and it entered enterprises in terms of taking on in you know, a back up and others. But there's still lots of industries and factories out there that have yet to be digitized, robotized. And what that requires is, is not a normal network that you have today, but a network Work that is highly reliable, highly predictive, and that can deliver kind of you know bandwidths and throughputs. But just simply now that that is going to you know generate so much data, you need processing at the edge, you need intelligence at the edge, and what we are putting together here are basic components of driving that that you know uh, revolution, right? So going back to George's point, we bring the basic ingredients at the hands of the you know developers and enterprises. Now, Going to look for them to really start, uh, you know, leverage them and then deliver the experiences. Yeah, to sort of just bounce off of that point, uh, you know, the increasing amount of data from sensors, the desire to have this low latency uh, performance from applications, uh, one of the most applicable er arenas here, I'd imagine, is machine learning, machine learning inference at edge. Um, Chris, going to punt this one to you, but uh, what makes infer at edge, inference at edge possible? with wavelength obviously round trip or latency is a little bit lower but it's a little bit more than that absolutely I, I, we're really excited about uh, the possibilities for inference at edge and and there's many cases for it um, uh, you, you saw just in the video preceding this the smart factory example mentioned by by Tata and the healthcare example mentioned by Avisha um, but generally one challenge with machine learning applications is is the responsiveness um, previously you had to your inference processing application really close to the end user, if, especially if you're using video. Um, and, and that meant the device needed expensive and power hungry processors. And additionally, if you wanted to update your machine learning model, you had to push out an update to the devices that were running your application. And now with 5G and Wavelink providing significantly lower latency and much more bandwidth compared to previous generation mobile networks, you can use the cloud as an extension of your mobile device. And so for edge applications, this implies you can actually perform the inference processing even with HD video in a wavelength zone with that real-time responsiveness uh, back to the mobile device. So by moving the inference processing into the wavelength zone, you, you're reducing the, the power requirements and battery light uh, drain on, on that device. Uh, but additionally, you can just to simplify your whole application lifecycle. Like when you need to change your training model, you simply just update the servers and wavelengths as opposed to having to make changes to those mobile devices. Yeah, a lot of challenges with running uh, ML inference on edge devices. So bringing these closer to folks in uh, wavelength zones is immensely helpful. Um, so I'm wondering when I'm thinking about porting my applications and, and delivering them through wavelength zones, uh, I'm wondering what services are available. Uh, generally available in both the San Francisco and Boston uh, wavelength zones today. So what services can I expect to be available if I open my console? Sure. So, so you can run the low latency parts of your application in wavelength, and you run them on uh, services like Amazon EC2 and EBS. We, we have a, a good assortment of EC2 instances for general purpose processing, as well as processing with GPUs available in wavelength zones today. And you can also use um, the services that orchestrate uh, EC2 and EBS like the container services, we see ECS and EKS, uh, E2 auto scaling. Those are all available for you to use today, along with other services like CloudFormation and, and CloudWatch and, and, uh, and so on. And of course, uh, the resources uh, in length are connected to your VPC in the, that runs in the region over a, a highly reliable and high bandwidth connection. So you can have access to all the, the services that are running back in, in the region uh, for the rest of your application needs. 
Wonderful. Yeah, I mean, those services are quite literally the building blocks of many applications. And I think that's a good segue into bringing Saravanan into the fold here. Saravanan, as, as a solutions architect for Wavelength, you help customers build applications using the fundamental building blocks and now Wavelength. Um, can you tell us how do services running in Wavelength zones connect to the 5G network and back to various regions? Because I think this is something that most people are probably wondering if they're interested in using this today. Uh, thank you, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. Um, so let me walk through the, 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 the flow, right? So what when a customer selects a region where Wavelength Zone is available, they create a VPC, then they create subnets in the Wavelength Zone. Once they create a subnet in the Wavelength Zone, they can run EC2 instances, ECS container instances, or KS worker nodes in that subnet and run their applications on top of it. These applications running on Wavelength Zone can then access all the resources in the region using that secure and high bandwidth connection that we have between the Wavelength Zone and the region. With, with AWS Wavelength, we are also introducing Carrier Gateway, wherein customers create a Carrier Gateway, attach that to the VPC. The main functionality of Carrier Gateway is to provide connectivity between the Wavelength Zone and the Carrier Network, which then enables your application to reach all the devices in the Carrier Network. The Carrier Gateway also performs NAT for the Wavelength Instance private IP addresses, the Carrier IP addresses, which is located from a pool of IP address which belongs to the network border group. The Carrier Gateway's NAT function is very similar to how an Internet Gateway functions in the AWS region. So these are the steps that customers use to connect back to the region as well as connect to the devices in the Carrier Network. Yeah, so diving a little bit in deeper, if I'm thinking about building applications using Wavelength and Wavelength Zones, um, what are the considerations that I should have or developers at home should have when thinking about architecting applications to make the most of Wavelength Zones? Now, I'm thinking most like AWS well-architected or architected principles, concepts around the realm of security, reliability, making sure I'm getting the most of high bandwidth connectivity back to the AWS region. Can you walk us through how someone would achieve all of those things? Absolutely, absolutely. As you have heard, Chris and Srini and others talk about how critical it is to place the application which requires low latency at the edge of the the edge of the network where Wavelength comes in. So Wavelength Zone is specifically designed for application which needs to connect to compute from mobile devices with ultra low latency and the application which needs high and consistent data rates from mobile devices. So AWS recommends customers to architect their edge application in a hub and spoke model with the region to provide you the most scalable, resilient, and cost effective options for components that are less la latency sensitive, application that needs to persist data, such as databases, when you want to train your ML models, some of the control plane applications, and place the other part of your application stack, which requires that low latency sensitive path of the network close to the web. So, so by that way, you're taking care of all the benefits of the resources and then place a critical part of your application edge powered by Wavelength. Yeah, thank you. I think that gives me a much more sort of tangible idea of what it looks like to, to, to build and use Wavelength Zones. Uh, Kirk, I've got a question for you now. So uh, if I'm not mistaken, in that opening video, we saw, again, not just from executives and, and, and folks on both sides of the table here, but also customers and uh, users of Wavelength Zones. And one of those was uh, Avesha with their shot tracker module. Um, I know that they've seen quite a few benefits uh, moving to uh, from 4G to 5G and using Wavelength. Um, maybe you could talk a little bit about what that experience has been like for them. Yeah, actually, yeah, you could actually see it in the videos, right? And seeing is believing. Right? The key, uh, the key is improved latency, which is really a major tenant of the service offering. Uh, in the Avisha uh, video, uh, Raj said that if the green bounding box boxes weren't moving, uh, identifying and moving quickly enough, then they wouldn't have highlighted the polyp, which was you know, a really small uh, polyp. And you know, the, uh, that would be the difference potentially between uh, the doctor um, and missing it, seeing it, uh, which then the doctor being able to see it allowed for easy uh, early identification uh, of, a, of a potential cancer, right? And, you know, the, as we all know, the earlier you identify something like that and you can deal with it, you know, the much higher chance of, uh, of a survival rate. Um, and in the case of the shot tracker video, uh, the demo that they provided showed uh, two people 
uh, passing the basketball back and forth. Uh, and it was easy to see in the video display, but also another key thing is you could actually hear it from the in-room microphones that the 4G network had a considerable lag, uh, but the 5G network moved, along, moved the ball along in real time. Um, and, you know, the, these are important, you know, key capabilities, you know, as Shot Tracker adds more functionalities uh, and new, new customer use cases. Uh, so, you know, yeah, the, the latency improvements were pretty obvious. Yeah, and I know at first glance, folks thinking that reducing latency is maybe an incremental improvement on workloads they already have, but I think sort of like the truly real-time applications like passing a basketball, for example, uh, it just enables another class of applications that previously were not technically feasible. Uh, so much more than just sort of this incremental improvement. Uh, Saravanan, another question for you. Uh, so you were very involved in this project and, and having to think about how users would architect with it. Um, could you give us an idea of maybe what a typical reference architecture would look like here? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, if, if you have seen the announcement, um, if I take Avisha's uh, use case as an example, Avisha's team is using the power of 5G and AWS Wavelength to bring deep learning to the edge to solve a healthcare problem. When we started working with Avisha to architect a use case to run on AWS Wavelength, we clearly saw the need for a robust platform like Amazon SageMaker to train and tune their models in the AWS region and then deploy the trained model to run on Wavelength for real-time inference. A typical architecture, if I could look at and think about it, would be like to use Amazon SageMaker operator for Kubernetes to power the entire platform where we can leverage node groups in the region to train and tune the models that the team is developing and then seamlessly deploy these models in another set of node groups running on Wavelength Zone, which then provides that low latency inference to the application at edge. By, le by leveraging the SageMaker operators for Kubernetes, customers can specifically focus on uh, enhancing their models instead of worrying about the deployment artifacts and managing the machine learning pipeline. Right. I think Theory's team also worked on it uh, with us on this project. I would also let Theory, if you want to uh, add a couple more points to that. Yeah, no, yeah. I think there are, all, there are really great points highlighting the value proposition of running AI at the edge for, for workloads that go, quite frankly, beyond what we did with Avisha, but that is really highlighted and exemplified by what we did there. And in part, it also shows the how the two elements really come together and work well, which is 5G and the wavelength capabilities with analytics running on them. Because that combination where we're able to use the performance characteristics of 5G to provide that low latency capability where the capture, the presentation, the analysis, all can be done in real time back to the doctors during the course of the activities, but also the flexibility because the the fact that you can run all this on a, on the, the the video capture and everything over a 5G network deployed into these various doctor environments really shows kind of again the transformative nature of how when you take those elements of 5G and combine them with wavelength you can all of a sudden support these these use cases that quite frankly as Nick said a moment ago not were, were not just possible any other way yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so you've convinced me. Uh, I'm, I'm about to go and use Wavelength Zones, but I have an important first question, and that's, you know, if I'm thinking about getting and delivering my applications closer to end users, I have to think about what, where I want to deploy them. So maybe I have users in parts of California, and I'm deciding between maybe US West 2 and uh, the newer San Francisco Wavelength Zone. So Saravanan, maybe, maybe you could answer this one. Um, if I have a client application, I want to access the lowest latency possible, how do I know if a particular region or wavelength zone will deliver better latency? And is there is there an easy way to figure this out? Uh, thank you, Deng. That's a great question. Uh, you know, when customers create an application or services today, um, and they run these applications on EC2 instances or ECS container instances or even EKS, um, what they can use is they can use AWS Cloud Map to register their services and applications. When applications running on the client devices can then use API calls to the AWS Cloud Map service to discover these endpoints already, right? So when you deploy applications across Wavelength Zone, use these I call the Cloud Map service for your endpoints, and then run latency services or latency test across these endpoints, even as ping, right? As simple as ping from these client devices to select the best endpoints that you have discovered from the cloud map. Or even use your geolocation data from the mobile device itself 
to differentiate between these endpoints to see what location you are and how to differentiate between endpoints as you discover them from AWS Cloud Map. Awesome. So yeah, if you're a developer being able to, you know, sort of ping ping the uh, ping the, the zones respectively or the AWS region, I, I think it becomes quite clear quite quickly, uh, which will deliver better latency for your end users. Um, so, okay, yeah, we're, we're sort of nearing the end of uh, a lot of the topics that we want to talk about. We've got one or two uh, left in the pipeline, but uh, a friendly reminder, again, this is live and we're going to be doing some QA in the in the end. Uh, so get those questions in in Twitch chat. Um, I mentioned before I had one question uh, to be answered before I got started with Wavelength, but I lied. Sorry, I have one more question. Uh, Chris, you're probably the best one to answer this one. I'm a developer. I'm interested in getting started. How can I do that today? Yes, awesome. So I, I sure hope there's a lot of folks on the on the Twitch uh, feed that, that are feeling that way. Um, you can go. Uh, I think Nick, are you going to post uh, some links into the uh, the chat? We have uh, um, our own uh, marketing page, and uh, there's a sign up form there. So please just go to the sign up form and uh, enter your details, uh, and we'll get back with you. And then we have uh, two events that are coming up, uh, one in, in uh, San Francisco area and one in the Boston area uh, that'll let you basically get uh, quote unquote hands on uh, with, with Wavelength. And, and I think these are gonna be really exciting. So uh, please uh, uh, feel free to sign up for, for those events as well. Wonderful. Well, uh, looking along in chat, we'll be collecting those questions in just a second. Um, but first, I have a few of my own, just because I'm the host here. I'm selfish. Let's get these questions. <laughs> uh, so, Chris, you know, you're, you're in the hot seat. You just answered that last one, so I'll, I'll keep you in there for just a moment longer. Uh, I'm wondering if customers have feedback around, let's say, services they would like to see available in Wavelength Zones or uh, an idea for the, the, the hottest new Wavelength Zone uh, location. How can they provide that feedback to us? Sure. So, I mean, both both companies uh, love hearing from customers, and and uh, we we uh, really want to get input. We feel this is just day one uh, for Wavelength, and and we know that there's a lot that uh, you're probably going to tell us about as you start using it, and so uh, lots of ways to give us that input. Um, maybe the the simplest is you know all of us are are on Twitter all the time, so feel free to to send us a, a DM or or um, you know um, uh, post something about what you're interested in seeing. Um, we'd love to hear from you, um, and and of course uh, there's other channels as well. Um, if you're working with uh, with sales uh, from any of the, either of the companies, um, you can always uh, use that channel as well. And then, of course, there's uh, other places like uh, uh, AWS forums and, and uh, Stack Overflow and so on. So we, we monitor all those and, and we uh, are eager to get your feedback. Awesome. Yeah, I shamelessly plugged my Twitter handle in there. But if you reach out and message me, I will get those messages uh, and that feedback forwarded along to Chris and anyone else uh, who that would be relevant for. Uh, cool. So we've got one question from chat. Uh, this question is, uh, does Wavelength only work with 5G devices? Totally valid question. And the desire to bring, you know, um, low latency sort of to the edge is, is totally valid, regardless of whether the bandwidth increases there. So I'm not sure if anyone in particular wants to jump in here. But uh, yeah, question fine. again, does Wavelength I can take that. Uh, thanks. They can, thanks for the questions. Um, uh, as, as Chris said, we love this. Uh, the, the answer is uh, no. Uh, um, Wavelength works also with uh, LTE for for G devices. The 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 reason that we're mostly talking about 5G is that that is where the full potential of the technology that we're building materializes. Um, obviously, some of the uh, 5G advantages was brought up for, by Srini and by, by Terry and uh, and Kirk. Uh, but also it's the future as well. It's what, what's what's available today, but also what will be available in 5G. We have uh, obviously the bandwidth and number of devices, the density that 5G will will uh, will support, but we also have the network functionality and, and, and other new functionalities that, um, you know, like slicing and, and, and other really forward looking functionality that we want to bring to our developers. So that's why we're focusing on 5G, but you could, go out and try Wavelength today on 4G devices. I don't know if anyone else has anything to add. Yeah. No, no, it's a great point, George. And I was, I, I'll just add uh, that, for instance, the, because we're able to support 4G, that means all of the 
development kits and capabilities that we've done and many of which we, we've done together jointly with AWS in the past for things around the IoT space, for instance, uh, have come along in this in this journey in terms of being able to get the benefits and, active, and, and value proposition for Wavelength. But we're also uh, moving aggressively to, to provide next generation 4G uh, dev kits. And also we now have a 5G dev kit that, that's coming out to market. So so now in terms of building your, your solutions end to end from device all the way through application, you have a complete suite of capabilities to do that. Wonderful. You know, I was going to ask a little bit about um, to the Verizon folks what sort of network integrations and experiences uh, users could expect. But I feel like on the piggybacking off of the five G topic, you, you happen to mention a few of those. Uh, any other insight though on that on the, in that space? Yeah, just just that it would be a seamless experience, right? And once you once you pop on your carrier address, you're you're off to the races. Hey, less is more in some instances, right? User experience, <laughs> the more you can get out of the way of developers, the, the better it is. So uh, I'll take that one. Um, one more question uh, for anyone at AWS who's interested in, in taking this one. Um, you know, we, we think about these wavelength uh, 5G edge sites and wavelength zones as, as you know, different regions or, or, or areas that we can deploy applications to. Uh, is there a special onboarding process to be able to use this? Do I have to significantly change my applications? What does it look like to actually Get onboarded to one of these uh, one of these five G edge sites. Yeah, I, I can make that. I mean, uh, essentially, what you need is is uh, to go to that uh, uh, landing page that that Nick posted into uh, the Twitch chat and and uh, and ask for access, and then you know, we'll get back to you with uh, with the access, and and then you just go to the AWS console um, or CLI or SDK, just like you, you you always have for your own application. Create a subnet uh, in a newer existing VPC with the wavelength zone that you choose, and uh, you can start uh, creating EC2 instances and deploying your application there. Of course, you'll you'll need a, a device on Verizon's network uh, as well uh, to actually connect to those, um, as Saran Vaughn mentioned. But uh, it's it's really as simple as that. It's just a another place to to deploy your application in existing AWS infrastructure. Yes, yeah, some of the most exciting feedback that I believe we, we've gotten this far, and Chris, you probably can bring up uh, uh, specific examples, is the, oh, I managed to extend my application within 24 hours to take advantage of, you know, our Chicago um, uh, pilot zone. Uh, that, that's feedback that we've gotten over the year, uh, which is ex exactly what we're aiming for. We don't want necessarily developers to have to do a lot of work to leverage Wavelength. Um, that's why we're using the same tools, the same services, the same um, EC, uh, EC2 uh, hardware types, uh, the same VPC abstractions uh, in Wavelength in order to enable to enable developers to just go. Yeah, I, I can also jump in there. You know, working with um, tens of different pilot customers, they were surprised to see that there is technically there is no change in which they are accessing these Wavelength zones. The APIs, the console, um, it, it's pretty much deploying a subnet and get, getting access to a wavelength zone and then deploying their applications and use the use the edge the power of 5g and the edge and also the power of all the services in the region pretty seamlessly pretty similar as george mentioned not even 24 hours just they get access onboarded they're pretty much um, on their way to get started and uh, deploying their application and get started so it's a uh, pretty seamless from a developer experience standpoint the, the way that we like to think about it when we're designing the various features of Wavelength and how we, we are enabling it is this is not like AWS, it is AWS, right? Um, so that, that's the kind of like a, a principle for us. Wonderful, yeah. Uh, happy to get all the, all the perspectives on that one. Um, so I think I have time for about one more audience question. Before I get into the final question though, uh, for folks that are looking to get started with Wavelength, I believe there are some upcoming events uh, in uh, upcoming events that folks can, can actually get hands on with Wavelength and, and in sort of an instructor led fashion, um, be able to get onboarded to it and be familiarized with it. I think we have some links to those. We'll, we'll throw those in chat. So if you're in either of those locations, um, maybe of interest to you, um, but sort of closing out in today's segment, final question from the audience. Uh, we hear a lot about slicing. It's something I'm not personally that familiar with, but folks are wondering when is that coming and how will that enhance? 
Uh, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, slicing is coming in months. Um, and how that enhances is, imagine that today you, you are used to getting three kinds of services. You got a uh, you know, broadband service, uh, which is the you know, data service. You have voice and messaging. Imagine that tomorrow uh, that you're driving in a car, you want the car to have the ultra reliable connectivity. You don't want any kind of packets getting lost or, or something else, right? You want the car to always drive on its own. And, and but at the same time, you are having entertainment, watching movies or calling somebody else. So creating these different layers of uh, you know slices to suit the different use cases is what the 5G network is going to enable. And these slices are end to end, they're created independently, which means that you know, the higher uh, reliability, higher performance services will come with that level of guarantee. And the BAU services, the services that you're used to, the, you know, the normal basic services that you're used to, they'll continue to be available in the way you know, that, that, uh, that you can consume. Um, just to kind of throw it out there, the 3GPP, the, the standards body for the wireless technologies, they envision about 128 uh, slices uh, to emerge. And right now there are a few like URLC, ultra reliable, low latency communication, MMTC and few others are getting defined. We expect more of these to emerge uh, you know, as we go forward. Wonderful. Well, uh, I think without further ado, that is going to conclude today's session. Uh, I know an hour flew by. Um, you know, we opened up with that 15 minute video from folks on both sides of the table at AWS and Verizon talking about this partnership and and uh, we actually got to actually see it in the hands of some customers and what they're building with it, which was quite exciting. Uh, and, and a big thank you to everyone that uh, was here on the, on the panel here. Uh, Saravanan, Terry, Chris, uh, Srini, George and Kirk. Uh, myself, Nick, uh, give myself a little pat on the back there. Um, <laughs> but again, thank you for tuning in. Thank you to everyone who is in chat who submitted live questions. We, we appreciate those and we hope you're able to, to get those answered for you. Uh, again, if you're interested in learning about Wavelength, uh, we have some of those learning links. We'll throw the links in chat. If you're interested in getting started, we have a link there for the, the Getting Started documentation as well. Uh, so again, very excited today, very exciting day. Launch, the launch of AWS Wavelength with two zones in both Boston and San Francisco. Uh, so again, thank you everyone for tuning in. That is gonna do it for us. Have a great rest of your day and we will see you all soon. Thanks Thank everyone. You. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Hey, thanks.